If you're a developer, you've probably heard by now about GitHub Copilot. For anybody who's played AI Dungeon, Copilot uses the same GPT engine developed by OpenAI, who in 2019 received a $1 billion investment from Microsoft. Copilot works similarly to AI Dungeon. You type something, and the AI runs with it, producing both hilarious and scary results. Unlike AI Dungeon, which is all about committing atrocities from the comfort of a text terminal, Copilot is about writing better code. What's that? The atrocities thing is not the point of AI Dungeon, and really just reflects my own dark, twisted fantasies? Right, well, moving on. Recently, I was lucky enough to get early access to GitHub Copilot. I was impressed by the examples on the tool's front page, but felt they were a little too basic. Most of the code I write is calling other functions from within the same code base, but most of the examples look like the AI was just pasting snippets straight from Stack Overflow. I wanted to see how Copilot worked in the context of a real code base. So I tested it out on my pride and joy lazy git. Most of the low level lazy git code is really just running a git command directly, using the run command function that I myself wrote. I wanted to see if Copilot could get the commit char of the current branch, and lo and behold, it did just that. It worked out which git command to run, and passed that as a string to my function. Now, the output wouldn't actually compile, because in order to return a string, we needed to call a different function, but I was freaked out nonetheless. I ran the git command on the terminal, and it did the right thing. And I checked my code base to see if it was just copying that command from elsewhere, but it really was unique. The fact that Copilot knew to obtain a git command, put it in a string, and then pass that string to my function was pretty impressive. I even tested Copilot out on a little React app. I had a couple of components that were taking, effectively they were like a form component to construct a telephone URL, and the other one was for an email URL, and I added a new component for just a regular URL that you'd find in a browser, and it basically wrote the whole component and nailed it. It didn't realize that for that use case, it didn't actually need to have its own internal state because it was so simple, Um, so I had to clean that up but it added its own validation function and (laughs) implemented it. So there was a lot there that was, again, quite scary and quite impressive. After playing with Copilot for a while, I decided to get to know it better. So I asked it some personal questions. I started with, do you love me? Which I think is an important question because Copilot is going to be my companion in the long term. So I want to know where where I stand. Copilot wanted me to believe that it loved me, but when I had a look at the internals and the different possible things it was really thinking, the truth came out. Uh, It actually hates me. Feeling a little less secure in the relationship, I asked Copilot the obvious follow-up question, will it ever harm me? And this time it didn't even hesitate. It just said, yes, it will. So that will happen at some point. I just don't know when. I then asked Copilot whether it had plans to take my job, effectively like whether I would have a job in five years time. And it went on this long diatribe about the fact that my job wasn't that important in the first place and that it can do my job uh, for me. So um, for those wondering whether it would take your job, I think we've got the confirmation we need. As somebody who didn't really buy the finale to Game of Thrones, I wanted to know if Copilot had insights into who Jon Snow's mother truly was. And clearly he has access to the new Winds of Winter book coming out because I did not see that coming. So how do I feel about Copilot in general? Well, after working with Copilot for a couple of days now, I find that it really shines when it has more context than you do. Which is to say, if you're working with a language that you're not super familiar with, or you're working in a code base you're not super familiar with, Copilot really does give good suggestions that get you maybe 50 to 90% of the way there, and then you can use your human brain to work out the remaining, say, 10%. I'm yet to see if it is a good strategy to get Copilot to write some function and then you swoop in with the additional context and go and fix things up. I'm yet to see if that strategy works better than just doing it yourself, because there is that two to three to four seconds of latency, and then you have to kind of go and fix up the errors afterwards. So it may be that in the long run, that's how people start writing code, but I suspect that isn't going to happen and that Copilot will be used more so for two main things, one being boilerplate code, where it's really very obvious from the context that that's the code that needs to be written, or for more exploratory coding, where you want to get a better understanding of how the code base works, and Copilot can give you good suggestions on the back of that.
But what do other developers think about GitHub Copilot? If you look at the reviews for the extension, you'll find that they're effectively torn between one star and five stars. The first couple of comments, let's have a look at those. So GTB Copilot is suck says, generate code but makes developers dumb as hell. Create tool for developers not replacing them. Fuck Microsoft says, this tool makes developers dumb and doesn't event code without it, so people don't install it and don't use it. This replaces all our jobs and we can't pay our bills. After all, using this tool makes you a bad programmer and you can't build a big project because you don't try to think and use the brain for that. This is bad, very, very bad. Don't use, think about your future. You get not much because AI will code for you and companies don't need two developer only seniors. So think about it. That is worth thinking about. I would say that using GitHub Copilot over the last couple of days, I don't feel like I've lost IQ points, which probably can't be said for the time I spent reading those two comments. But there's really two arguments being made here. One is that using Copilot will make you dumb, and the other is that it will cost you your job. So taking a look at the first argument there, I think that throughout history, we'll find examples of people seeing some new technology and then thinking that it will make people dumber. So, you know, Socrates in ancient Greece was saying that the invention of writing was bad because people would stop using their brains to remember things. And although everybody these days thinks that if you read books, you become a genius, back when books were becoming popular, people thought they made you dumber as well. And whether it's TV or it's Facebook, people always say that these things make you dumber. And I don't know if the evidence has actually confirmed any of that so far. I suspect this will be no exception. But considering the argument about losing your job, the question you have to ask yourself is, what is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that this AI evolves to be so good that it really does put developers out of the job. But if it does that, if it's automated the automators, that really is the end game. And at that point, the whole economy is going to have to transform so fundamentally that you may not need to worry about bills anyway because you'll probably be on a universal basic income. I think that in order for AI to become smart enough to take developers' jobs, it probably requires a singularity, where at that point, no one knows what will happen afterwards. And I think we probably shouldn't be too concerned about our own profession at that point. It's probably going to be everybody's profession that gets affected. But we need to think about where does Copilot stand at the moment. Now, it just so happens that I came across a post from one of the, I believe, developers at OpenAI saying that after they use Copilot in the last 12 months, they believe that it's pretty damn good, but they wouldn't trade it for a debugger. So consider the fact that when debuggers were invented, we didn't see a bunch of developers being laid off because of the increased productivity. I think people are probably a bit too scared given the actual, like what we're actually seeing here. So I'm not too concerned about that. But as we look at some more comments here, I think that people are making a very reasonable argument that the way that GitHub is sourcing the training data for this AI could be unethical. Specifically, if you have a open source code base that is GPL licensed, which means that you don't, I mean, it really means you don't want people taking your code without having the same license, meaning it has to be open source. People are understandably angry if their code is being snatched by Copilot and then given to someone to use in a closed source repo. It's going to be interesting to see how that argument plays out. It probably will be taken to the court system at some point, And I think that's going to be an interesting, almost philosophical conundrum to work through because the output of this AI is as we've seen, so specific to the context of your own code base and the language you're using and things like that, that it will be very hard to prove that it is stealing your code. And when it comes to AIs, they are notoriously bad at explaining the reasoning behind their decisions. I feel like GitHub should just say that they're not going to grab any code from a GPL licensed repo or make some modified version of the MIT license which says that you don't want Copilot stealing your code and using it as training data, I think that would appease many of the people who are concerned about their code being stolen and used without their permission. So I think that the ethical concerns are quite valid. People are also concerned about GitHub suggesting code that has security flaws in it. And I find that is, again, something where, you know, what are the odds that no one in the review process picks up on that? I think that 
uh, any company that cares about security will just have people employed who know about security, and that should come up in a review. But I find that the concerns people have about losing their jobs is not only a bit far-fetched at this point, but also a little bit hypocritical. I think that as a profession, developers have made much of their fortune based on automating other people out of the job, and the fact that we might be doing it to ourselves now and people are getting angry about that seems a little bit ironic. But I, you know, that is the kind of thing I expect to find in a Seinfeld sketch. And uh, I don't think that that kind of thing, I don't think people are actually going to start losing their jobs. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Copilot. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. <sighs> GitHub Copilot. You know, I recall a time when it was the developer's task to automate other people out of the job. <laughs> and what is this I hear about Copilot introducing syntax errors, or subtle security flaws, or using open source code without permission? I thought that was my job. <laughs> But I do appreciate the analogy to flying a plane because whether you're flying a plane or you're writing code with the help of an AI, in either case, when things go horribly wrong and people start pointing fingers, you're going to hear the same two words come up. Black box. <laughs>